Chapter 2 contains a great deal of theory, and at first read, it can be quite overwhelming. So don't get frustrated with it. You may find that you have to just read pages over and over, you know, three or four times, and they start to make sense. The other thing in Chapter 2, because it focuses on the conceptual framework, it's laying the foundation now, but we'll find throughout the whole textbook we'll keep referring back to Chapter 2 because we'll see more and more application of it. So don't get too frustrated with Chapter 2. It's your first time being exposed to the conceptual framework, and we will keep coming back to it to help solidify your understanding of it as we go through the course. Having said that, you still need to be able to have a, a handle on the concepts, the definitions, and that sort of thing for the first exam. My point being, you need to study the material, learn the basics of the material. We will reinforce it throughout the rest of the course. I would just want to point out a few of the pages in your textbook. Uh, this is by no means suggesting you don't need to read the other pages. Just that there are some of the visuals I thought were particularly good in this particular chapter. So on page 46, this hierarchy of accounting qualities, the idea of relevance versus faithful representation. If information is relevant, you know, it's going to make a difference to the decision. If it has faithful representation, it's reliable. So the information can be relied upon to be uh, not always 100% accurate, uh, but fairly stated. Uh, so again, phasal representation, we used to refer to it as rely reliable. It still means that. So, and then down here, the, uh, the textbook reinforces that. The other visual that I really liked in chapter two was on page 62, this uh, upside down triangle, if you will, over the conceptual framework. So, you know, the first layer is, you know, the purpose of financial reporting. We hit that really hard in chapter one. And then, you know, here we have a second layer, the qualitative characteristics of useful information, and what are the elements of the financial statements. And then the third layer are these principles, assumptions, and the, cons you know, cost constraint. So you'll want to know all of that. The other page that I'm including here is this idea of fair value. I'm mentioning it here because you may or may not have fully understood it by reading the narrative. But in accounting, sometimes we don't just report assets at cost. We may report them at fair value. So as we get into this, and we'll see it very much in chapters 4 and 5, this idea of fair value, but, you know, what is fair value? Well, it depends on the asset. Uh, there's three different levels of fair value. If we have an identical asset, well, stock is a common one for that. So if I buy, you know, stock of Apple, uh, my share of stock is the same thing as your share of stock, somebody else's share of Apple's stock. They're really identical. So I can go to the Wall Street Journal, I can find a market value for that, and that's its fair value. So that's an identical asset. Level two would, uh, pertains to similar assets. So if I have a used car, my used car may be similar to your used car, but they wouldn't be identical. Even if they're the same year and the same model, my used car isn't going to be exactly like your used car. So they're similar. So usually there's some quoted prices. You know, there's price ranges for, you know, if I have a 2010, used Camry, uh, there will be quoted prices for 2010 used Camry. But again, it's a similar asset, not an identical. So that estimate of, of market value uh, isn't as precise as what we would see in layer one. And then level three, you probably just are not going to understand yet, but this will have to do with uh, measuring you know, the inputs and the outputs of an asset. And it's, it's going to be, you know, we're going to be, pro would be projecting certain things in the future. That's going to be more subjective uh, in uh, projecting those. And we haven't gone in, gotten into the idea of present value. 
Uh, we'll see that more in chapter six. But again, you can see we're going to be projecting what a machine may, you know, the cash flows the machine will uh, produce and uh, do some mathematical calculations with that. So anyhow, I just wanted to bring that to your attention.